Hello you guys and welcome to VR Monday. Now unfortunately today I don't have any tutorial ready for you guys or anything like that because I had something else planned for today so this is what we're going to talk about. This question actually came up in the discord and I was like you know what let's talk about this because People seem to enjoy these kind of talk show news like there's a building site outside my window. So yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing today. So we're going to be talking about a 5G and what it will do for VR and AR. Yeah, I'm going to throw AR in there as well because of how excited I am for AR. So yeah, we're just going to talk about that. First of all, before we begin, let me just say to everyone that 5G is not a threat, okay? I need my coffee for this part. This is very bad coffee, by the way. My normal coffee was gone. Okay, so 5G is not a threat, okay? I have s just a few people in my family, like not, not this family, but further, that think 5G is a threat. Do you know what is more of a threat than 5G on the wave spectrum? Your microwave. So literally, your microwave is doing more harm to you than 5G will. And that is because 5G is lower on that spectrum. It's a tiny little spectrum, by the way, 5G. It's not very big at all. 5G is not the same as five gigahertz, by the way. So if anybody tells me that my router at home is giving me cancer, I will be offended. It's a tiny little wave and it's super weak. Like it's bad. Like 5G is genuinely bad. And I'll tell you why in just a sec, but I felt like I needed to get that out of the way because I'm going to have people telling me that 5G is going to give me cancer and that the government is using it to spy on us. And maybe the government is using it to spy on us. Let's be honest right there. That could be a thing, but it's not going to give me cancer, not more than my microwave anyway. And I use my microwave on a daily basis. Plus, I hold my phone in my pocket on a daily basis. That thing is closer to give me cancer than anything else. So yeah, so I feel like I need to, oh, that is bad to get that out of the way. But yeah, no, <laughs> if anybody wants to educate me and tell me why I'm wrong down in the comment section below, please do. I will read those comments with a smile on my face. Multiple good YouTubers that have a much more proper knowledge about this than me actually did a bunch of videos about this. For example, Mr. Who's the Boss recently did a video on a USB stick that promised to shield you from the bad waves of 5G. So if you guys want to watch that video, I will leave a link to it down in the description below in case you guys want to be a little bit more educated than listening to this guy talk about something that I don't have enough scientific knowledge about. So yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, 5G is bad. <laughs> and let me tell you why. So I watched MKBHD's video on this, actually. I'm sure he will never notice me, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he did a great video where he literally went out and a lot of youtubers did this um but i just watched marquez specifically and he went and he did a test on five gigahertz in the city like he actually went and he tested it out and when he was right next to the transmitter it was great it was perfect he was getting absolutely beautiful speeds but the second he left and he went behind like a wall it was gone you know, it's like the five gigahertz in your house. Uh, five gigahertz in your house can travel much, much less distance than the 2.4 gigahertz in your house. And I'm not sure if calling it a spectrum is the right thing here, but that's what I'm going to call it because I'm not educated properly. So when it goes through walls, it gets weaker and weaker and also distance. So distance and walls make the power of it much, much smaller. And 2.4 is just much stronger and can travel a further distance and it's much more stable when going through walls. So pretty much if you were outside and you were getting the 5G signal, I don't know how many towers they would have to put up. I don't think this is going to be very good to be honest with you because you're not going to get 5g in your house you're not going to get 5g if you're standing next to a shop in fact i don't even know how this is going to work they'd either have to put the transmitters really really high up in the air so that they can transmit with no obstruction but then that won't work if skyscrapers are a thing it's it's really really confusing to me how they are planning on making 5g work through walls and through all the obstruction that we currently have but maybe you guys know more than I do, which is probably the case. So let me know down in the comment section below. Now let's move on to what 5G will actually do for VR. And we are going to take the best case scenario here. That's what we're going to take. We're going to take the best case scenario. We are going to take, let's say 5G actually works 
correctly and they find a way to make it work really really well no matter where you are that's that's the scenario we are going to take currently that is not the case but that is what we are going to do let's say 5g does work as well as it's supposed to well you could potentially be taking your future ar or vr headset out on the road with you and no matter where you are you'd be getting 5 gigahertz household speeds. So you know, the 866 megabits per second that is required for virtual desktop to work, for example, you'd be getting that because you would be working on 5G. Now, 5G is also a lot, lot less latency. And I tend to say high latency because I keep messing up my words. Like I said, Beat Saber requires high latency. You guys know what I mean. It requires low latency. 5G will also be lower latency. Of course, it's a higher, newer generation standard of the 4G and LTE we have right now. So of course it would be lower latency. So therefore you would be receiving packets at a much lower MS or ping as people say, than you would be right now on four gigahertz or LTE. Now, this also means a few other things. For example, right now, if I were to go outside and use my four gigahertz network to access virtual desktop outside on my computer, I can't do it. I've tried, trust me, it's very sad. I I walked around the street and I like bumped into it. It's it, beautiful, just, <laughs> I recommend it. But no, it didn't work. It was very bad. Like the transfer speeds were horrible. It lagged like hell and you just couldn't play Steam VR. Now I have gigabit at home, so I can quite literally imagine if I were to go to somebody else's house and they had gigabit, maybe, just maybe it would work on Steam VR. Unfortunately, I don't know anybody else who has gigabit. Uh, when we get gigabit at work, I will make sure to try that out for you guys. I'll bring my quest to work and I will try stream Steam VR from my PC here at home using gigabit to work using gigabit and we'll see how that turns out. But basically that would work on 5G. So realistically, you could have maybe a home server running at home and in the future when there's a different OS where we have these tiny little glasses that do not require power to be in the glasses themselves, but they instead connect to a base station like a computer, for example, you could be anywhere around the world and you could be connected to that base station and it wouldn't necessarily have to be a computer. It would just have to be a tiny little box that houses all the components instead of them being in the glasses. And you guys actually, again, me something new yesterday. eSIM is a thing. I totally forgot about that. Apple uses them in their smartwatches. And guess what? Those glasses, those AR glasses, those VR glasses could be having eSIM support with 5G support. And they could be using that 5G on that eSIM to communicate with the tower and then receive information from that base station at home that is connected using gigabit. Now, how cool would that be? You would have ultra lightweight, ultra small glasses, maybe not like this, because of course it does need more components, but they would be ultra lightweight and hard to distinguish from normal glasses, which currently like the Google Glass, for example, wasn't. And all the components you would need would be back at home in a tiny little box, maybe about the size of like an Android box or an Apple TV box, connected just to your router using gigabit and everything would be powered from that. Now, a lot of people uh, would kind of like the device to be standalone, but a lot of people in my comment section yesterday agreed with me. Uh, using the device as an accessory or having it receive data from somewhere else is actually better for a lot of people. A lot of people would prefer it to be lightweight. A lot of people would require it to be nice and compact on your face rather than having it be bulky on your face and house all the components here. So a lot of people agree with me on that end. And therefore, I think it would be great if we could have that little base station sitting here, or maybe we wouldn't even need it. Maybe the company would have that handled. Maybe the company could have thousands of these boxes, these base stations over in wherever their company headquarters are and using 5G transfer speeds, because let's just remember they are super low latency. And I was about to say high latency there again, it would connect to those base stations, relay the data back to the glasses and everything would be happening up in the cloud. Or if it was at home, at home. And to be very honest with you, I would much more prefer it to be happening at home because I feel like I have everything much more under control at home. And then if a company ever goes bankrupt, I still have my little box and I can work from it. So that would be really, really cool. Now also imagine 5G because 5G for VR might not be as exciting as 5G for AR because let's just remember VR going outside could be a little bit meh, but if we had the option to have AR and VR in the same glasses, 
there you go. That's where things start getting interesting because you could actually start changing the world around you because you could overlay the objects over the world around you and just start transforming the world into whatever you wanted. I mean, I think that's kind of crazy. Let's not lie, but that's where we're heading and it's kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of creepy as well, to be honest, because imagine somebody hacked your glasses and you were just walking down the street and somebody hacked your glasses and just the world started changing around you. Kind of creepy, but Pretty cool, not gonna lie. Uh, I, I'm digging that, let's be honest. Uh, I'm digging that. Not the part where somebody hacks my glasses, but the part where I'm walking down the street just going... <laughs> you know, to, to change my music, just like... Shoop, shoop, play this. <laughs> Pretty damn cool. Can't wait for that to happen, to be honest. And if Apple does release its glasses for $4.99, I'm going to be buying them. Uh, even though it's Apple and I hate them, I don't think any other company is going to do it before them. But uh, yeah, and hopefully it has 5G support. Because mainly what we're talking about here when we're talking 5G is we're talking the super low latency and super high transfer speeds. So basically, the ultimate end game here would be everything would get a lot smaller everything would get a lot lighter and a lot more portable because all your data, all your computing could be done either up in the cloud or in a separate box. And that is the way that would work because a lot less things would have to be housed in the headsets themselves. And personally, I think that's great because let's just remember the main problem that people have with the Quest right now is the fact that it's super front heavy. That wouldn't be a thing if the Quest didn't have to do all its computing. If all of that could be done in a tiny little computer or a cloud somewhere up there in the company's headquarters. So yeah, should we be excited about 5G coming to AR and VR, especially with the new Qualcomm chip? Since the new Qualcomm chip is is in fact being created towards AR and VR applications and it has 5G support. I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna say we should be super excited, especially since, again, since Qualcomm created this new chip, this is clearly the way they want us to go. They created this chip especially for VR, especially for AR, and they want to start using this new 5G technology. Now, I'm not sure how many companies have it already. I know only a few states have it. I don't think Ireland has even started playing around with it, but I can totally imagine this thing getting closer and closer as the time progresses and it's getting closer as we're speaking it's not that far away as we might think so yeah i think we should be excited i think this is going to be really cool and if you think 5g is going to give me cancer i'm going to take that risk so if you guys like this video make sure to give it a like if you disliked it i guess this button works too but please let me know why down in the comment section below if you guys like these types of videos please let me know if you want to see more kind of me talking around giving you the new news the tech news and stuff also i'm thinking about having a new series uh somebody suggested this in the discord and i was like damn that's actually kind of a cool idea should we do a series about operating system reviews just me reviewing the craziest operating systems i can find i know russia i think has its own os uh that could be interesting to review it might hack my entire internet but that might be interesting. And they already mentioned a few operating systems that they would like me to check out. So if you guys like that idea, let me know down in the comments section below, please. I will actually also post that in the polls on the Discord. So if you guys are not following me on my social media, make sure to follow me right up here and up here. Uh, make sure to join our Discord because that's exactly where I ask you questions like these and get your opinions on them. Join us on Reddit where I wanna see you guys posting spicy original memes about my face. So if you guys are not yet subscribed, I post tech videos daily and VR videos on Mondays and Fridays. So if if you want to be notified of future videos which come up daily, make sure to smack that subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next one. Peace.